So apparently I have to introduce myself, right, Tim? Yeah, that's okay. what I said. <laughs> that's me. Um, name is spelled correctly, yes. Uh, I'm currently a solution architect. I've been with M6 for mm, it's about 23 years now. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so a little bit about IX API. Um, I stand, stood here last year giving a similar update. Um, so I was wondering, well, what, what can we say that hasn't already been said about this? Uh, this, is an, uh, this is an effort that was started in 2018 when M6 DKIX and Lynx realized that we were all kind of struggling with automation. Uh, we got requests from multiple parties that they would like to automatically um, provision and configure things on our, on our platform. And I would like to use one single API for that instead of constantly uh, developing new things for, for each um, IX separately. So that's where we, where, we, where we went. We wanted to create something like uh, an industry standard, industry standard for, uh, for interconnection services. Um, it's very much, uh, the scope was very much limited to IXs in, in the beginning. It's become a little bit bigger now. Uh, so we also added things like cloud connectivity. Um, there's there's uh, point to point uh, connectivity. All these kind of things have, have been added over time. It's now a fairly complete standard. Um, I would say the standardization effort is it's not like we, you know, it's not a hockey stick where we, where we come up with new things uh, every single time. So it's now really more of an, almost a maintenance mode where we uh, do small tweaks to the, to the standard. Um, like I said, we're currently on uh, version 2.6. Um, compared with what we had last year, we added, uh, we, we, yeah, we started making uh, small uh, fixes. Um, hopefully to make it more sustainable. Um, there's, there's been tweaks to, to allow for more uh, flexible cloud connectivity. Um, one of the big things that have, has been added is routing functions and layer three properties, which is something that I would never have thought to put in an IX API, which is typically layer two. But uh, the idea of cloud routers and layer three functionality uh, is real, it's, it's a real use case. Uh, so we built that in as well. Uh, adoption, industry-wise, well, it's not something that, that we market a lot. It's, we, we don't give a lot of publicity to it. Uh, but strangely enough, uh, left and right, people are starting to ask about it. And there's, there, there is interest, and it's, it's almost like, a, I would say, it's, it's, it's an organic, uh, organically growing interest that, that happens. Um, we hear it from partners, we hear it from other internet exchanges as well, uh, because, uh, well, last month we had, a, um, we had a workshop at the URIX uh, forum, and uh, surprisingly it was, it was very well attended. Um, interactive session, so we played around with the IX API sandbox, uh, which is brand new and, and quite, quite nice. Um, and we got a lot of good feedback on that. Good discussions, good feedback, uh, plenty, plenty of interest. Um, so, what are we doing as M6 to to kind of promote this? Um, we're trying to see if we can. Well, I wouldn't say shoehorn, but if we if we could see where it's applicable outside of just purely uh, the M6 uh, environment. So we participate in uh, Ecofed and FNS, uh, and these are. Um, government funded, I would say, or, or yeah, EU funded even. Um, and they're geared toward future network services and, and federated cloud uh, connectivity. And as part of that, there is always uh, a network automation layer that has to happen. So we're looking at, well, can we use IX API for this? Is, is this an applicable technology for that? Um, if not, then well, fine, you know, it's, it's, it's not, but that's, that's also something that we can, uh, we can learn from that. Um, that's the standardization. Um, the next thing, of course, that's, that's really important is the implementation, because it's nice if you have a standard and you, you've got open API specs and you've got sandboxes, great. But now let's, let's use it. Um, and that's where we're 
that's always a challenge uh, for us uh, because that means you have to develop things and you have to put it into production and you have to find the people and the resource and the time to do that. Um, from the very beginning, we had what we now call a legacy uh, uh, V1 implementation, which is built on, uh, on the MIAM6 uh, platform. That is, that is used, um, it is in production, uh, but since we're migrating away from MIAM6 to the Salesforce and, and a separate OSS layer, we need to, uh, we need to migrate the IX API uh, application as well. So we currently have a Salesforce integrated IX API implementation that supports both the V1 and the V2 specification. Um, and uh, I'll be talking a bit about future architecture for that as well. So this is the legacy IX API. Uh, like I said, it's uh, built on MIAM6, uh, and on top of the MIAM6 core, there's the portal, uh, there's a bit of API, and there's IX API. Uh, it's, it's kind of monolithic, and uh, so we need to move away from that. Uh, with the Salesforce integrated API, the IX API is still a standalone application. It has its own database, uh, and it talks to Salesforce, and it talks to our OSS stack. In the meantime, Salesforce and the OSS stack also talk to each other, which kind of gives you a sort of three-body problem. You have to synchronize state. Uh, you have to make sure that it all uh, stays consistent. Um, in essence, it means you have to maintain three databases and make sure they're, they're, they're still consistent. So it, it kind of feels like the application that we currently have is, is kind of bolted on. That in, initially, that seemed like a good idea um, because it, it would mean you could do uh, independent, um, uh, independent development of, of the application. Turns out that reality, of course, is, is different. Um, it makes it really hard. So, where do we want to go? Well, we still want to maintain IX API. It's, it's, it's the thing that we want to, to, to build on, but it's probably better to kind of integrate it into the OSS layer. Uh, that has a challenge because IX API also allows for some of the business logic where you can order things. So it's not strictly part of the operational stack, but we can probably, uh, we can probably work around that. It's, it's, uh, you have to compromise somewhere. But the idea is that if we integrate it more tightly with our OSS uh, system, then part of the API that we currently have on the OSS, uh, we can replace with IX API, which means that we would be, uh, as, as they say, we would be eating our own dog food, uh, which also helps us in, in making sure that you know, what we build is actually useful and, uh, uh, and valuable. Uh, so that's the future architecture. Um, where I would say, well, one API layer that we, that we maintain, as much of it pushed into the IX API, um, there might still be some M6 specific bits that, that of course, will, will always remain. Um, but we will try to see how generic that is and maybe make that part of the, of the standard spec as well. Um, hopefully, we end up with a single unified data model, um, and that would take take care of one less uh, sync problem um, and that's that's really where we uh, where we see ourselves uh, going um, and then of course this is this is very very uh, far-fetched but we currently have a user portal that is built on Salesforce which is not for not not for everything is is it might be the best solution so if we have a full-blown API layer ourselves Maybe we can also build uh, portals on top of that. So that also gives a little more flexibility in, in what, we, uh, what we build. And, well, there's some links on more information. Uh, or you can always talk to me, and I'll be happy to, uh, to explain as much as possible. <laughs>